Greetings and welcome to Jeffrey Films. Been watching a lot of black sales lately and I thought why not review a pirate movie? So this 1995 movie was directed by Remy Harlan and he also did Die Hard 2, Cliffhanger, Deep Blue Sea, The Long Kiss Goodnight which also starred Gina Davis. So let's review Cutthroat Island. This movie starts out with adventure movie? Check. Pirate map? Check. In the Caribbean in 1668? All right. And also Morgan Adams is passionately making love to a lieutenant, but afterwards he intends to arrest her. This is supposed to be clever, much like a lot of the dialogue in this movie. It's supposed to be clever. I knew that you knew. By the way, that won't work. See, I took your balls. She heads off with her companions and we get some sweet beach riding on horseback. And why was this guy surprised? Also, she couldn't wait for her crew. She rows on her boat and it's sunsets, pretty skies. And then we jump straight to the boat and it's dark. And then we go back to her and it's sunset again. So good continuity there, guys. Her father has the map in his head that Frank wants, a young Frank Lagella, and he's playing Doc Brown. Daddy jumps off the boat and he's been anchored and she shows up and Daddy gets shot. So she jumps into the water and swims down and rescues him. They go to this really sweet location far away from the ship because you know, they must be really good swimmers. And she starts delivering lines. The location's beautiful by the way. But when she's delivering lines, you can tell she was poorly cast. You leave talk me. I will fly his bloody head as my banner. You leave talk. Before dying, her dad tells her to shave his head, and the ship the Morning Star is going to be hers. Next, we're at a fancy regal party where William Shaw is picking up wealthy daughters. He says he's a doctor and gives some very flirty lines, and this is the second point I thought this was going to be a terrible movie. Then he gets identified as a thief. In medicine, it's our obligation to probe to the very bottom of things. <laughs> Morgan's on her ship getting drunk probably because her dad died, but not the funny like I know how to act like I'm being drunk, more like the I don't know how to act being drunk. Bring it here. <laughs> oh, mutiny, will ya? We see that she has a friend that's played by the evil Stargate ghoul dude and he's talking to her. We also find out some dude wants to become captain of the ship, but her dad wanted her to do it. Also she has a scalp which has the map printed on it and there's three parts to that map. Next we're at Port Royal, Jamaica where she dresses up because they need to find someone who speaks Latin because she thinks the thing's in Latin. Later we discover that it's actually just written backwards, so that's kind of dumb. Shaw claims to speak Latin so she goes to go bid on him because he's being sold as a slave. But this other guy really wants him because he wants to punish him. So she goes over with her little dagger and starts digging into the other guy until he leaves. Some soldiers see a wanted poster and realize, hey, that could be Morgan Adams. We should go arrest her. And then the adventure begins. But I gotta say, that's not how falling works. We have to climb down here. Fast! There's a carriage chase and she jumps on top and starts battling guys. Johnny Depp would have done this with some comedy, but she's lacking the charisma and the script isn't helping. There's also a dock ship that's shooting at this carriage and it's missing every time and destroying the city. A ship! I find myself being fired upon by an entire ship! The governor talks to her author friend, the dude from Stargate, and he's riding pirate ships to chronicle his adventures. The governor wants him to tell him when she finds the treasure. She goes to see her uncle Mordecai and she changes outfits with a horse so she can get past his guards to see him. And she promises to sleep with some of the guards before she presumably is going to go sleep with Mordecai who's her uncle. I might point that out. Wait a minute. I recognize you. You're not a whore. Call your men, and it's the last sound you make. She talks to Mordecai, and he says he'll help her find Cutthroat Island, as all three of the brothers had one part of the map, and now she'll have two parts of the map. And then Dog shows up. This is probably the best casted person in the movie. Morgan, I'm gonna ask you just once for your daddy's piece of the map. 
He threatens her with an eel to shawl light some gunpowder up and then a sword fight begins. Dog accidentally kills Mordecai and then what the hell is this? She's just kicking things. Saw that little niece. I remember when you were a little girl. Always flinched when you saw your uncle Douglas, didn't you? Give me the map. Give me the map. Where's the map? Give me the map! There are some terrible one-liners. She gets shot and there's more explosions, but they escape anyways. I mean, why take out a ship when, you know, you're setting up a trap? One of Dog's men's complain about not having enough food. Can't leave yet, Captain. We haven't put enough food on board. We need less mouths. She pours rum on her wound, and I guess she's good now. And her and Shaw figure out the coordinates. And then she overdramatically faints. They want to cauterize the wound, but Shaw says he's a doctor and that he should pull the bullet out or else she'll die. Then they have some small tax. She tells him that the treasure is from a Spanish gold ship. And then he negotiates for a kiss if she wants the other part of the map. Dog ship the Reaper is five miles off and closing, and she wants to go through the coral reefs because his ship is heavier and she feels they will drag along that. But he knows that, so he goes around. Shaw has both parts of the map, and he's reading them and figuring out the coordinates before she sneaks up on him. No, you were right. It's not on any chart. Where did you have it hidden? In the boat, under the seedy thing. Shaw admits to not being a doctor, and then they take him down below. And the writer Ghoul dude, yeah, he's marking down the coordinates too, before a storm hits. And it's a pretty wicked storm, but he still puts the message on a pigeon and sends it off in the storm like it's gonna make it or something. The water from a crashing wave breaks her window. I have to ask, how shitty is your boat? The crew wants to mutiny, so they put her on a longboat along with her loyal crew, and they send her away. Shaw escapes and he jumps in trying to get to her, but then her boat's flipped. It's really a swimming game now. The next day they wake up holding onto some wreckage and they lost two crewmen, but they conveniently find the island. And she also has both map parts with her. Like they threw her in the longboat with the map. How stupid was her crew? They go through some snake infested jungle and Scully the mutineer helps Dog find the island so both ships are there now. Dog and his men make camp but no one's on guard so Shaw just sneaks in and steals the map from him. He doesn't even kill him. Why wouldn't you kill him stupid PG pirates? Shaw then gets stuck in quicksand and Morgan finds him, and then she bargains with him for the map. It is a terrible scene, but it does at least show that he's trusting. They put the map together and they go off, and they have to repel down a mountain till they find this giant cave. There's huge spider cobwebs. There should be a giant spider in there they have to battle, but there won't be. Also, I call bullshit on how she lit this torch. They see the treasure and there's a lot of skulls on it then they start playing with it but you know what you still gotta kill dog his men the mutineers get your ship back and then transport it all back there i wouldn't get so excited she heads back up and wanders off so she didn't hear them when they were right behind her and dog and his man grab her and throw her off the cliff down onto shaw shaw grabs her and then they cut their rope and they both fall into the water presumably to die sadly not The author Google dude from Stargate finds Shaw washed up on the shore and he leads him to the soldiers that he called there and takes him to the beach where Dog's sitting there too and Morgan can see the beach from where she's hiding. Shaw's taken aboard Dog ship and her men are prisoners aboard the Morningstar and she rides the anchor up, snaps a neck and frees her men and they toss the others overboard. I guess they all have the treasure now because they're leaving. I would have liked to see them transport it because it did not look like it was going to be easy to get out of that cave. So I guess it's a boat chase now. And Dog decides that he's gonna hang Shaw because he suspects that she might be on that ship watching. And then right before he hangs him, the quartermaster on her ship shoots the hangman. And then they exchange cannon fire. There sure is a lot of cannons. Someone really should have been sunk by now. 
and they board each other's ships and much sword fighting happens. Shaw finds a treasure below deck and she lets some gunpowder to blow up the bottom of his ship. There's uh, no future in the army, sir. The bottom of the boat is flooding and Shaw gets trapped down there and Morgan's fighting Dog and she climbs up to the top and then he's like, join me, just like Vader did. Except when she falls, it's very CGI-like and it's bad. <laughs> Shaw's now head deep and Dog's down there and in the amount of time it took her to say and do her plan and catchphrases, Dog could have just stepped out of the way. I'm just saying. Are you planning to fight me with that little stick? No, Uncle. With me. Bad dog. She rescues Shaw and they swing over right before the ship is savagely destroyed. At least that looked good. She attached a marker barrel to the treasure so that they could go down and get it afterwards. Because the barrel survived this explosion. They have the treasure and it's enough for them to be kings, but they're just gonna keep pirating. The lieutenant says he's gonna join their crew at the end. Matthew Modine played William Shaw, but that wasn't the original plan. Originally they had cast Michael Douglas, but then he backed out because the script just got worse and worse. And they also tried to cast Tom Cruise, Keanu Reeves, Russell Crowe, Liam Neeson, Jeff Bridges, Ralph Fiennes, Charlie Sheen, Michael Keaton, Tim Robbins, Daniel Day-Lewis, Gabriel Brines, all of them turned down the role of Shaw. So congrats Matthew Modine, you got the role. The script was rewritten a ton of times and it had an inflated budget that was much lower initially and it became like 98 million but some even said it came to 115 million. It made 10 million at the box office. I'm telling you, if you make a shit movie, you kind of deserve this. In the end, I know I'm being a bit harsh on this movie. It had a plot that was very much by the numbers. You know, the music was good. I'll give it that. But the director hired his wife to play the lead role in this pirate swashbuckling film, and I didn't feel she was really well cast in it. I don't mind Gina Davis. I'm sure I've seen her in other things I've enjoyed, but not in this. And those lines that she's saying were terrible. Partially delivery? partially horribly written. I felt like all the timing of every dialogue joke was off and it just didn't land for me. Well, I mean, you could watch it. Yeah, go ahead and watch it so you can feel my pain too. As always, thanks for watching.